Hey everyone, Anthony Fantano here, internet's busiest music nerd. Hope you're doing well. And in this video, as you might have caught from the title, we're going to be talking about a new bit of legislation going through Congress right now, which could potentially affect the music industry, uh, potentially or specifically the streaming sector of the music industry, songwriters uh, specifically. And there's been a lot of coverage about this on a music site that I follow pretty closely, Digital Music News. Uh, we have Paul Reznikoff of the site here with me right now, and we're going to be talking about the legislation, uh, who's pushing it, who could potentially benefit off of it, what it could be missing, and um, why it could put songwriters in a situation where they're kind of at a, a, an uphill battle uh, as far as being paid adequately by uh, streaming services and the like. Paul, thanks for coming on, dude. Hey, my pleasure. Let's dig in. So uh, to start, where exactly has this legislation come from? You know, who wrote it? Who is pushing for it to be written? And, and who is going to see benefit of this passing? Because right now it's moving to the Senate. And after that, it would need to bounce back to the House uh, again after that, I believe. Is that correct? Right. So you've got the House version, the Senate version. Then there has to be a unified uh, bill that then is submitted for presidential approval. And then it uh, becomes law of the United States. Uh, and it's well on its way. It's uh, firmly in the Senate. Um, you know, our sources are telling us this is maybe weeks away from uh, having a fully baked Senate version, which means it's very close to actually getting signature and, and becoming law. So who's pushing this? Well, a lot of sides are pushing this. Um, the brief history is that Spotify's, you know, near 10 year existence has been mired in licensing controversy because uh, a lot of stakeholders have said, well, wait, you haven't paid us. You know, you're streaming and growing and we didn't get a check in the mail and you forgot to pay us this license. And they say, oh yeah, we did forget to pay that license. And then they say, well, we didn't know about that license. And they say, well, you said we're supposed to pay this person. And that person says, no, we didn't get the check. And it's the deeper you dig, the more chaotic it is. And it's hard to really figure out who kind of effed it all up. Um, at root here is a license called the mechanical publishing license. And to understand that, you sort of have to go back to relative ancient times when music was fixed in a mechanical way onto a format. Pick an old school format. Let's take a vinyl record. A recording is, is, is pushed, is mechanically affixed to that format. Hence you have, uh, a mechanical license. And so the publisher, the people who own the songwriting, underlying lyrics and, and, and notes, then get paid because their creation was fixed into a format. When it enters streaming, it's not so clear what the hell's going on. What's being fixed to what? You know, hey, I thought this is all in my Wi Fi. It's all digital now. And is it being fixed to anything? Yeah. Exactly. And actually, Spotify has argued back. Their lawyers have said, well, wait, you know, you're suing us for billions here for this mechanical. We didn't find an example of us fixing anything to anything, so maybe we could just fight this. So all the warring chiefs got together, and they decided that it would make more sense if they could agree moving forward on a new way to address this license instead of warring it out for the next five years in, in court. Mm. Okay, <laughs> Hence the Music Modernization Act. And um, is this act an attempt to give Spotify the ability to totally skirt these payments that they owe, or is it a way for them to essentially kind of pay these same payments, but under a different guise? Because obviously the music isn't being fixed to anything, it's digital, but why not, I guess, a digital version of that same kind of license? That's right. So that's the incredibly intelligent question, because what you're realizing is that um, there is some level of fiction attached to trying to stuff this very old ancient license into a very new world. But what the party sort of said is Spotify said, okay, well, we'll agree to continue this idea that we're uh, fixing something to whatever. We'll keep the mechanical license. We'll pay you that. Uh, given all the complexities and disputes, we're going to uh, start a new era where we're going to pay a new group that uh, counts all of our plays and determines what our mechanical bill is going to be. And we're also indemnified for any previous issues involving the mechanical license. So we're going we're gonna to carry the fiction forward, but so-called modernize it 
by all agreeing that we owe this and we're going to pay this and we're going to create the the mechanics, so-called mechanics, probably the not not the best word to choose there, but we're going to create the practical uh, way to pay this this license moving forward. Okay, so in the effort to create this legislation and kind of cover uh, everyone's back because uh, it sort of seems like there's kind of a lost in translation situation going on here because we're talking transitioning from physical formats to digital formats. Is something else being lost in translation there where labels or musicians aren't seeing quite the benefit that they would like to out of this resol- uh, out of this uh, um, legislation, the Music Modernization Act, as they would out of previous fees that they would get off of mechanicals? Right. So the people who have the biggest problem with this legislation are actually the people who are not the biggest publishers. Uh, and anyone below the largest publisher uh, uh, has some sort of reservation about this. And the reason is that while they like the idea uh, of having a license that can carry forward and that Spotify that can pay, they've, they've said, well, wait, wait, why does Spotify get a get out of jail free card? And one of the largest uh, indie publishers in the world, uh, Wixen Publishing, uh, has sued this company, has sued Spotify for billions of dollars because they argue that Spotify just didn't pay them on this license that they should have paid in the past. This legislation says, well, no more of that. Like, you can't sue Spotify anymore because they're going to comply with and they're going to obey the law now, but you can't construct it, but you can't Pass. So we're going to start over. This is going to be a, a brand new start, and here we go. You know, a lot of publishers say, "Well, that's not fair. You can't get a, a get out of jail free card." And then another complaint is that, well, this system that they're going to create is not a good system. It's created by uh, entities that have failed to create the systems in the past. And oh, by the way, why didn't Spotify create this system to begin with? After all, they're making money off of music. Why didn't they figure out that this was a license as deemed by law and create the system 10 years ago? So they feel like it's, it's unfair and, and furthermore that they won't actually get paid for the uses. Yeah, as, as you just said um, earlier and as has been reported, there is, uh, uh, there is a clause sort of worked into the legislation that Spotify can't be sued over, uh, over, over this specifically. And, um, and like you said, I, I didn't know at the time uh, when I was asking you that it went as far as sort of to be like a get out of jail free card, like the whole slate is just wiped clean as if they don't owe anything previously when we were in sort of that gray area where nobody quite knew who owed what, but just assuming Spotify owed because they are making money off of it, uh, off of the replay of this music. Um, I, I guess my question beyond that, though, is... Um, so publishers will not be able to sue Spotify with the understanding that, okay, well, with this legislation, everything's going to be black and white and it'll be clear now and Spotify will pay us and they'll owe us the money. But previously, it seems like they've been skirting payments that they owe just, uh, I don't know, it's, it seems like they're kind of feigning ignorance a little bit. You know, sure, th- there's a bit of a gray area there, but it seems like we haven't been able to trust them to make those payments in the past just because they have been able to act like, oh, well, you know, it's it's all just too confusing. <laughs> Meanwhile, you guys make tons and tons and tons of money and probably have loads of lawyers on your side who, if you really wanted them to go through the fine print and explain all of this to you, they easily could. So, I mean, is, is there really kind of confusion or ignorance on Spotify's part? We don't really know. Yeah. Um, there's... There's professed ignorance, yeah. that's for sure. Um, I guess my point I is that it's questionable. It is questionable. Um, it gets into this nasty quagmire because the history is at some point there was uh, a very clear uh, demand to pay this mechanical license, mm. publishing license. Okay, And Spotify said, oh, we didn't know what that was. And then the publisher said, well big publisher uh, trade organization, which is party to the MMA now, says, okay, well, don't worry about it. We're going to help you pay this license and, and get get this back on track. So if you, if you use our mechanical rights uh, agency, uh, we'll take care of it for you and make sure that you comply and, and it's a set it and forget it thing. So then the problem was that 
three years later, everyone went back and they said, well, wait a second, these licenses weren't being paid even through this agency. So the agency was the problem. And Spotify says, well, the music industry doesn't have a database. We don't know who to pay. So isn't that the music industry's fault? So, so you have all these you know, people pointing fingers at one another. Meanwhile, it's just a giant mess in terms of who should be paid, who wasn't paid. Uh, other streaming services were kind of caught with their pants down. And then you have these arcane processes for actually paying on this specific license. So I think the answer is sort of all of the above, that there is professed ignorance and there's also actual ignorance, which uh, some of it I, I do believe. Uh, either way, it just wasn't, absolutely was not working. Um, the idea that, that there's there's not a... Um, uh, the, the idea that there's not a database or anything, I mean, you know, doesn't, doesn't, don't places like, uh, I guess previously during the broadcast era, you know, didn't places like BMI sort of serve that purpose? Um, you know, is, is that something that companies like Spotify can still make use of now, or is that kind of slowly being phased out now that we're kind of in the era, the era of streaming? Well, it's actually needed more than ever. Yeah. Uh, you bring up BMI. So BMI, sure, they, uh, they track their clients plays on radio and then they add it all up and they say okay well all these radio plays added up to such and such and then they chop it all up and send out checks so they have their database which would arguably cover a very substantial portion of the music world um, so they've got a big piece um, another company is called ASCAP they do basically the same thing those two companies actually got together and said hey we want to be part of the solution we need to create an overall overarching database for the music industry that yeah. everybody can use and you know uh you know, when anybody makes a song, they enter their, 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 their rights and all the breakdowns and we know who the backup singer is, you know, who the third writer is, you know, who every owner is so that any service that wants to come on board has a fantastic infrastructure with which to work, no lawsuits, everyone gets paid. Mm. These efforts have been uh, stymied by one problem, one political battle over another uh, and just total sheer incompetence. Um, over the last 10 years, there have been multiple attempts to make these databases, and none of them have worked. And that is, uh, it, it's almost like a city not being able to determine uh, how to build a road, right? So it's very hard for anyone to do business and drive over these, you know, dirt paths that are, that are the result. And that's sort of the analogy that's uh, applicable to the music industry. Um, so there's pieces of it, it just hasn't been created. It, it seems sort of like a, a bit of unnecessary confusion to me as far as who should get the money in their pocket. I mean, it seems like the people who Spotify owes money to should be in close contact, given that the music that's on their platform, Spotify is not just simply stealing or taking the music and putting it on their platform and then waiting for the rights owners to come to them later to say, hey, our music's on your platform you owe us money i mean obviously publishers and labels are putting the music on the platform and instead of having to just pay that money directly to the publisher or the label and then letting them sort of divvy the money out amongst who the songwriters are amongst whoever else is sort of owed money as a result of those streams spotify is expected to track down every single person connected to the track to give them some money right well this is a, a, another huge debate Right. So one alternative, which Spotify has not adopted, is uh, they could say, well, if you want to put music onto our platform uh, via TuneCore, CD Baby, DistroKid, whatever platform you want to use, one of the requirements we're going to insist on is that you upload all of the uh, publishing and rights information. Otherwise, we're not going to include your music onto our site uh, platform. Spotify's chosen against that route, and, and there's an obvious reason, which is that if everything is held up because the writer information or the splits haven't been entered, then you've suddenly reduced your catalog by a very substantial You wait degree. forever. You wait forever, and it's just an, you know, it's a list of something to do for you know, hundreds of thousands of people who will never do it, and you never get the music. But by doing that, technically, um, Spotify is not uh, uh, creating a database. They have never created their own database to track who they should pay. That has opened them to massive billions, actually, worth of infringement claims because of that policy choice. So there's sort of this attitude of sort of build it and then figure it all out later, which, which has been uh, a very hazardous path for them. 
actually the MMA helps them get out of a, of a substantial portion of that, um, which brings me back to one of the biggest complaints of this, which is that why should Spotify you know, get out of jail free for past transgressions when they should have created the database and done all the suggestions you just outlined? So finally, to tie this up for a lot of the people who watch, I know we have a lot of um, independent artists and musicians, musicians who may be on smaller indie labels and maybe even artists who watch every once in a while who might find themselves on majors uh, and might not be aware of this legislation going through. Uh, going forward, if this does manage to pass and assuming it stays roughly the same as it is now, what could artists and, and music fans potentially expect um, as, as far as how this might affect the bottom dollar of a lot of these people who are trying to essentially scrape their way through the music industry and, and try to make it in the age of streaming, which seems like it's just getting harder and harder than ever. Oh, there's, a, there's a huge amount of you know, pick a you in detail that the artist is going to have to deal with in the future. Doesn't mean that it can't be done. Mm -hmm. But my advice to any artist that's aspiring and finds uh, herself or himself on Spotify is to make sure you are part of the post MMA rights database, that you are properly registered and you go through that headache to make sure that your music is represented. There's a little bit of a poison pill in all of this, which is that if you don't claim your music, and you can get a million plays easily on Spotify. It happens to great bands all the time, and they come from obscurity to millions of plays. If you're not properly claiming your rights through this newly created database, that money will then go to somebody else. Okay, that's another dicey aspect of this bill. Um, so my best advice would be to just try to stay abreast, even send us a note, you know, news at digitalmusicnews.com. We can give you some pointers to get your uh, music license. Talk to your distributor, TuneCore CD Baby. Figure out how you can get registered uh, because then you actually will be paid. And I'm not saying those payments will be great, but at least they'll be going to you, the correct person. And as far as um, this legislation stands right now, um, you know, it, it seems like in order to continue to be paid or be paid at all, that some artists are going to need to jump through some hoops or deal with a little bit of red tape. But as, as it stands currently, does this legislation affect um, how much artists are being paid off of this or sort of the rate at which they're being paid? Um, or is that just like uh, a completely different issue? That, that is a, a different issue. However, the good news is that on the publishing side, so this is songwriters, lyric writers, uh, payments are actually gradually increasing. So they had been uh, effectively a little bit over 10% of overall uh, revenues that Spotify earned. Now that's ticking up a few percentage points. So uh, I think that what's happening is that Spotify is looking at the situation saying, well, huh, you know, all this pressure that songwriters and uh, indie publishers have been exerting has actually started to pay off because there's now legislation. The U.S. government is getting involved and in saying, oh, actually, you should pay songwriters a little bit more. And because you haven't done it on your own, we're going to force you to pay more. So, uh, you know, hey, something is actually getting better for songwriters and publishers out there. And um, and finally, we have been talking a lot about Spotify, but this legislation also affects pretty much every other music streaming service out there as well, Apple Music, Pandora, et cetera. Is that correct? And, and That's uh, correct, yeah. And in your, in, actually in your even, experience, have yeah. those platforms been having the same kind of problems or confusion with like, oh, you know, who to pay, where does the money go? It really depends. Mm -hmm. uh, I would actually give Apple much better uh, uh, credit. Um, they've scored much better in this area. They've started to figure out, okay, well, they've proactively decided to pay more on the publishing side. Um, they've uh, done some different contracts to, to try to figure out how to pay better. So they've uh, used their substantial infrastructure to, to be part more of the solution. Um, other streaming services have been sort of um, caught with their pants down, so to speak, you know, and they're trying to scramble and figure this all out. Other companies like uh, you look at, you know, Microsoft, they've just kind of said, ah, we, this is too, too crazy. We're, we're out of it. It, it couldn't, could it navigate it and it's decided to sort of pull out. But, uh, but yeah, so it's, there's enough chaos to go around. I think, um, Spotify, you know, becomes a boogeyman because, you know, they have 70 million paying subscribers. They're the big kahuna, you know, 
uh, they're going public, you know, all these big things. They're sort of the big, big winner here. So, yeah. so they've become the focal point of it. Um, deservedly so, you know, they're, they're, they're the lead horse, but you're correct. Other streaming services um, uh, also have found themselves in various states of chaos. And, and finally, uh, I'll ask because you didn't mention it there in, in your last statement, but um, uh, Spotify planning to go public this year. Um, mm-hmm. is, is their sense that this legislation is kind of being pushed through uh, right now at this very moment because Spotify is potentially trying to tie up some loose ends so that investors aren't getting cold feet with more suits like this going forward into the future? Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. The legislation uh, uh, calms investors' nerves. Uh, it just makes it that much easier uh, for them to you know, bow onto Wall Street. It doesn't one one thing I should clarify is that although the the legislation does have an indemnification clause, uh, it only has that indemnification clause for lawsuits filed on or after January first of twenty eighteen. Hmm. So Spotify still has the headache of previous lawsuits, but uh, importantly, those there's a cutoff, right? So a lot of these publishers didn't realize that when the bill was drafted, so they're out. Sorry, they can't uh, file lawsuits, which of course they. Uh, d- don't like and may even challenge, but it does cut off a major, major source of lawsuits and litigations and does calm the waters for uh, for Wall Street. All right. I want to thank Paul for coming on from Digital Music News and sort of explaining and breaking down this bill and its potential effects. Um, I guess, uh, are there any sort of concerns right now with the bill that you feel like music fans and, and artists should be trying to voice to their representatives in Congress at, at the moment, or is this just something we should just kind of be keeping our eye on? Well, to the extent that, that uh, you know, the protests would matter, um, I, I think there's a lot missing here, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a, a decision not to create a, a comprehensive database mm-hmm. and a, a decision not to pay everybody. Uh, it's, a, it's a bit sloppy and I think benefits the biggest stakeholders. Uh, so as I mentioned, you know, if you don't claim your money within I believe it's three years, then your money gets apportioned to the big guys like Sony ATV and Warner Chapel. Uh, I don't think that's fair, and I think there's a lot uh, missing in this bill. Um, so, so yeah, there's certainly a lot to complain about, um, but it looks like it's moving pretty, pretty quickly towards completion. All right. Well, thanks very much for uh, coming on hey. and breaking it all down, and uh, we'll, we'll have you on again if there's uh, anything okay. else we need you to explain to us over here. Uh, <laughs> I'll link uh, some of the articles that uh, are on Digital Music News down there in the description, along with news at digitalmusicnews.com. And uh, again, Paul, thanks for coming on. Hey, totally. Thank you.